Now that we have played with the HTTP library, let's go ahead and reformat this so that we're actually using best practices and removing HTTP and stopping from injecting it into a component. Create a new folder under shared and we'll call it services. And inside of that, we will create a new file called user service.ts. Now let's create a new service. We're going to import injectable from the Angular core and we'll use that decorator here and we'll export class user service. Now this service will be in charge of communicating with that API for all things users. Let's go ahead and comment a couple things out that we'll need to do. We'll need to grab all users so that will be an API call. We'll need to get a single user, create a user, update a user, and finally delete a user. This service will be in charge of all of those things and once we use the service inside of that app component, the app component won't need to deal with HTTP anymore. That job is solely on this service. Since we're using HTTP here, we're going to import from Angular HTTP and we'll bring in HTTP. Let's get that constructor in here and private HTTP. Now we'll take everything from here and we're going to grab users, but we're going to do it inside of this function and let's get a real doc block in here, get all users. And we'll call this get users and inside of here, we're going to have that HTTP call that we had earlier. We're only creating the observables in this service. This service is not responsible for subscribing to get any data here. We're just creating cold observables. The app component, that's where we go ahead and subscribe to it. So here, we don't need subscribe. We're just going to HTTP get and map. And this is what we will return. That looks good for our get users function on this user service. Since we created a new service, our application doesn't know how to use it yet. We're going to go into app module. We will import user service from shared services. And then down here under declarations, we're going to create a new providers array, which is where we add services and we'll do user service. Now that our application knows this user service exists, we can use it in app component. We'll go back. Instead of injecting HTTP, we're going to call this service and we'll call user service and we will import that. Now we have the user service available in app component and we can finally use it here in ng on init. We'll say this.service.getUsers and this is what we subscribe to. We know that we get users back. This.users is equal to users. Now we've cleaned up our code considerably. Our app component doesn't really care how HTTP is used. It just knows that the service is going to get us users. Let's go take a look at our app to make sure everything is still working. All right, we had this call. We used our user service, which got the API call. It returned it to the app component and app component assigned those users to the users array. Looks like all is well in our new refactor so that we have this user service and HTTP is totally separate from the component. Let's take a look at our user service and do a little bit of cleanup here. Right now, we have this hard coded in right here. Once we start going in and creating get a single user and all of these other methods in this class, we'll need to use this HTTP URL many times. Let's go ahead, take that, and we'll create a private variable here users URL and it's going to be a string 
and it equals that URL we just had. Now down here, we're going to say this.users URL. All right, our app still works perfectly. And one last thing I'd like to do is let's type hint what this function, what this method is going to return. This get users is going to return an observable and this observable will have an array of users. So we're going to say observable and inside of here, we're going to have a user array. Right now, we don't know what observable is or what user is, so let's import both of those. RxJS observable. And let's remove that O there. And we also need the user, so let's go back out, models, user. Now we are able to type in our methods on this user service. And this doesn't seem like a lot, but once we pass this code over to another developer and they come in and they want to use this service as well, let's say they say this.service.getUsers, they can click on this and see exactly what's coming out of here. We have our doc block, which gets us the information. Let's open that back up. We have our doc block, which is the description, get all users. And we also have the type of what's going to be returned and what is going to be returned inside of this observable, which is an array of users. That way we don't have to go digging through any code to see what's coming out of this method. We already know exactly what's coming out. So this is where TypeScript can help make us more efficient developers and know what's going on in our code, especially when we work in big teams. Let's delete that now, we don't need that. So this will be the start of our user service and we'll go through and flesh this out as we start building out more of our application.